Hello everyone. Welcome to Pharma Ignite. I am Vijay Kevlani, Assistant Professor, LJ Institute of Pharmacy, Ahmedabad. Pharma Ignite is a platform where you get knowledge of various aspects of pharmacy. Currently, pharmacy is a growing world, and to be part of this world, you need to have clear your basic fundamentals, and that's what we are doing here. We are building a basic fundamentals for those who are interested to be part of pharmacy. To practice pharmacy, you required a uh, lots of basic knowledge, and that's what we are doing. We are providing series of lectures which will talk about various aspects of pharmacy. Let's say how drug is manufactured, uh, how drug is analyzed, what is mechanism of action of drug, and various parts of drugs. So, without further delay, let's talk about our today's session that is general pharmacology. We are going to have total 15 lectures under general pharmacology where we will talk about various aspects of pharmacology like what is pharmacology, pharmacodynamics, pharmacokinetics and adverse drug reaction. So in this session I am going to talk about what is pharmacology and brief introduction of pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics and adverse drug reaction because these three are main pillars of our pharmacology or you call it general pharmacology. So without further delay, let's move on to our session. So pharmacology is science of drug. It is derived from a Greek word pharmacon and logos. Pharmacon means a drug and logos means to study or to discuss it. So pharmacology is nothing but a study of drug, various aspects of drug, how these drugs act, what they does to our body, what we do to these drugs, how toxicity is produced and everything about drug is study of pharmacology. It deals with the interaction of administered chemicals with the living system. So drug is nothing but chemical, right? drug is a chemical when we administer this chemical how this chemical interacts with the living system that is what we are going to study in our pharmacology pharmacology includes all aspects of knowledge about drugs as I said all aspects of knowledge about drug but most importantly those that are relevant to effective and safe use of drugs. The most important part of pharmacology is to talk about the drugs which are for our safe use, for prevention of disease, for cure of disease, for diagnosis, for treatment purpose, for analyzing purpose. So that is what drugs are, right? And that is what we are going to talk about in this session, in brief. Moving on, history of pharmacology. So pharmacology as an experimental science was piloted by Rudolf Buckim who founded the first institute of pharmacology in 1847 in Germany. He started this laboratory to study various actions of drug in his own house where he established this laboratory. Following this, in the later part of 19th century, Oswald Schimburg, who is also known as father of pharmacology, started working on this. Oswald Schimburg, with his some disciples, put forward some of the fundamental concepts of pharmacology. The main two divisions of pharmacology are pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. So, pharmacodynamic. So, dynamic is derived from a Greek word dynamis. Now, we know pharmaco means a pharmacon and dynamis means power. So, pharmacodynamic is a power of drug. What drug can do to our body or what drug does to our body, that is what pharmacodynamic is all about. This includes physiological and biochemical effects of drug. Now physiological means related to the function of our organ system. 
physiology that is function of our organ system and what this drugs are doing to the physiology of our body that is what we are going to study in this dynamic apart from that biochemical effects means effects on the biological molecules biological molecules let's say for example it is glucose so some drugs will alter blood glucose level that is biochemical effect of drug that is what we are going to study apart from this their mechanism of actions at organ system subcellular level macromolecular levels we are going to also study the mechanism of drug action how these drugs are acting on the organ system level on subcellular level on other micromolecular level how these drugs are forming their action let's have a beautiful example that is dolo 650 one of the most widely taken administrative drug that is dolo 650 or you call it the main ingredient of this drug is paracetamol now whenever we take this drug through oral route right means orally we take this drug this drug will reach to our gi tract let's say stomach now in stomach this drug is broken down or you call it disintegrated after disintegration this drug is dissolved and after dissolution this will enter to our blood stream that is process of absorption right so now then after what will happen so after drug is administered and absorbed into the blood stream it will go to various cells it is distributed to various organ systems various tissues and cells of our body now as soon as drug will reach to the cell number of chemical reactions are going on in a living cell and drug is going to interrupt in one of this chemical reaction and produce or alter the response of that cell that is what drug is doing right so mechanism of action of drug so drug drug will bind to a receptor it will induce a specific signal and ultimately produces a response that is what mechanism of drug is okay next is let's talk about a beautiful example of adrenaline so whenever adrenaline is administered it will reach to our blood stream ultimately now from blood stream drug is going to be distributed in various cells and on the surface of the cells there are adrenoreceptor so drug will interact with this adrenoreceptors or you call it adrenergic receptors what is receptor first so receptor is a macromolecule which is made up of protein which is present on the surface of cell or inside the cell and it initiates the reaction receptors does not take part in the reaction but it will only initiate the reaction there are four types of receptor in pharmacology one is g protein coupled receptor ion channel receptor enzyme linked receptor and nuclear receptor now the drug its drug is having a specific receptor to be bind on right so there is a lock and key mechanism Uh, with the drug and receptor now focusing on our example of adrenaline so adrenaline will bind to specific adrenoreceptor adrenoreceptor is a type of g protein coupled receptor so what will happen so a signal will be generated by this g protein coupled receptor so g protein mediated stimulation of adenyl cyclase now adenyl cyclase is a enzyme what enzyme does in our body so enzyme either initiates the reaction or enzyme speeds up the reaction here adenyl cyclase which was inactive initially now it is converted to active form and in presence of this enzyme what will happen so there is conversion of atp to cyclic amp so atp2 cyclic amp in presence of active adenyl cyclase so that is another signal so first signal was activation of adenyl cyclase second signal is uh, conversion of atp2 cyclic amp right 
Now what will happen? Due to this, there is response is generated from the cell at the cellular level. Let's say the, this all process occurred in the cardiac cell. So adrenaline bound to the receptor, adrenoreceptor present on cardiac cell. So what will happen? At the end, the response is stimulation of this cardiac cell. Another, let's say this drug adrenaline is bound to pancreatic cells. Receptor present on this pancreatic cells. So what will happen? So there is release of glucose and causes hyperglycemia. Third is, let's say this drug is bound to the liver cells or hepatic cells. So what will happen? So glycogenolysis will occur means breakdown of glycogen to glucose will take place. So that is kind of response due to a specific drug. Moving on, the topics which will be covered in the uh, next sessions regarding pharmacodynamics are principle of drug action, mechanism of drug action, types of receptors, dose response relationship and types of drug effects moving on to our next topic that is pharmacokinetic so kinesis is a greek word from which this word kinetic is derived right kinesis means movement and pharmacon means drug so movement of drug is our pharmacokinetic it is what body does to a drug when we take this drug orally, it will move to our GI tract, it will be absorbed, then it will enter to bloodstream, it will go to various cellular levels, again it will come to liver, again it will pass from urine outside of body. Right? So, movement of drug from taking it from mouth or any other source to excretion of drug. Throughout this process, what our body is doing to this drug? what changes are produced by this drug that is what we are going to talk about in pharmacokinetics pharmacokinetics includes absorption distribution binding localization or storage of drug then after biotransformation and excretion so what happens when we take this drug orally it will reach to our gi tract the drug is broken down or disintegrated then after it is dissolved and then after it is absorbed from the blood vessels present over there just like our food whenever we eat what is done what happens so this food enters to our stomach it is metabolized and the small particles are absorbed from the bloodstream as nutrients just like that drug is also absorbed from the blood uh, from the GI tract right and it will enter to the bloodstream after entering to the bloodstream drug is distributed to various parts of our body via this blood to various parts various organ systems various uh, tissues various cells and it will remain in this cell it is bound to that cell or it will store in that cell for a while. Next process is biotransformation. So after that, drug will again come to the bloodstream. So from this cellular environment, drug will again come to the bloodstream and it will reach to the liver, which is chemical factory of our body. So in liver, what happens in liver? There is process of biotransformation. A thousands of enzymes are present in liver which takes part in this process. Biotransformation is nothing but an alteration of chemical, alteration of drug in a way that it is easily excreted from our body. Right? And lastly, after alteration, after chemical change, there is excretion of drug. Right? So, drug is excreted from urine or of by exhalation or by fecal material or by any other route just like sweats okay so let's take an example to understand pharmacokinetics example of paracetamol 
So paracetamol is rapidly and almost completely absorbed orally, attaining peak blood level within 30 to 60 minutes. So what happens when we take this paracetamol orally? It will reach to our stomach. In stomach, this drug is broken down, right? It is disintegrated, that is broken down. And then after it is dissolved in that fluid, in the fluid present in stomach, so it is dissolved in that and then after from this dissolved fluid it is absorbed just like our food we take food it is broken down in stomach and other parts of GI tract and then after the nutritions are absorbed the same thing occurs with the drug so nutrition are absorbed the same way drugs are also absorbed for absorption of drug from GI fluid to blood strip there are number of transport systems are present you call it active transport passive transport various transporters facilitated transporters right so this helps the drug for its absorption in the bloodstream right now here is one beautiful line that the peak blood level is attained within 30 to 60 minutes it doesn't mean that action of drug will start after 30 to 60 minutes but it means that maximum concentration of drug in blood is achieved after 30 to 60 minutes of orally taken time right moving on after the drug is absorbed 25 percent of drug is bound to plasma protein and drug is widely and almost uniformly distributed into the body so 25 percent drug is bound to plasma protein so we take this drug drug administer uh, drug is absorbed into the bloodstream now in bloodstream there are various proteins available for example albumin is there uh, glycoprotein is there right on this proteins drugs are bound when drug is bound to the protein it is in inactive form and when drug is free it is in active form right so free drug is only active drug when drug is bound with plasma protein it is not active right so 25 percent of drug is bound to plasma protein so 25 percent of paracetamol is bound to plasma protein remaining drug is uh, distributed uniformly into the various parts of our body moving on it is extensively metabolized in the liver primarily by glucuronide and sulfate conjugation into the active metabolites so after distribution what happens in distribution drug is distributed to various cells various tissues now what happens when drug is distributed in this tissues the concentration of drug is decreased in bloodstream right initially what happens there after taking the drug huh, and talking in terms of concentration so what happens when you take this drug orally it will enter to your stomach there is high concentration of drug in stomach now so it will move to low concentration which is bloodstream so drug is moving to bloodstream that is process of absorption so now uh, bloodstream is having higher concentration so from bloodstream drug is distributed into various cellular levels right in various tissues where there is no concentration of drug so once again between bloodstream and cellular level there is a bridge of concentration high and low right in cells there is low concentration or no concentration of drug in bloodstream there is high concentration so drug will move once again from high to low concentration now there will be a time when bloodstream will be having low concentration of drug so what happened at that time at that time from tissues drug will again come to this bloodstream and this will reach to liver now liver is a chemical factory where all drugs are metabolized okay it is chemical factory it is having various enzymes and this enzymes ultimately causes biotransformation 
bio means living transformation means change so change in the form of drug using living cellulars using living enzymes using enzymes of body that is biotransformation the biotransformation of drug is done ultimately to convert in a form which is easily excreted by body right now here uh, another word for biotransformation is used metabolism now metabolism is not proper word because metabolism includes anabolism that is synthesis and catabolism that is breakdown so more preferable word is biotransformation only change in the form of chemical change in the form of drug after biotransformation what happens there is excretion so let's talk about this biotransformation of paracetamol so it is extensively metabolized in liver so ex extensive biotransformation occurs in liver and primarily by glucuronide and sulfate conjugation right so glucuronic acid glucuronide it is for glucuronic acid and sulfonic acid right sulfate conjugate sulfonic acid so glucuronide acid and sulfonic acid both are bound to our drug and lastly excretion of drug so it is excreted in urine it has plasma half life of 2 to 3 hours and clearance value of 5 ml per kg per minute so all drugs ultimately drugs are excreted widely from urine other is from fecal material or via exhalation or via sweat right moving on this is the uh, curve of concentration versus time now when this curve you can see that initially there is at zero time there is no blood concentration of drug right initially concentration increases in the plasma slowly slowly with time and that is part of absorption that shows absorption of drug right this is the one absorption of drug now after some time drug will reach to the peak concentration in the blood now slowly slowly drug will distribute in other tissues right so that is distribution so blood concentration of drug will decrease as drug is distributed in other tissues of body then after what happens then after the drug concentration will again fall down as drug is eliminated elimination of drug is metabolism and excretion both metabolism and excretion is combinedly known as elimination so drug is eliminated of from body so with the time the concentration of drug is decreased right moving on the topics which will be con uh, covered under pharmacokinetics are mechanism of absorption concept of bioavailability and bioequivalence volume of distribution plasma protein binding biotransformation enzyme induction and inhibition excretion and kinetics of elimination moving on the last pillar of general pharmacology that is adverse drug reaction so adverse effect is any undesirable or unintended consequence of administered drug so whenever the drug is administered and it produces some unintended use for which we have not taken this drug let's say if we take uh, any drug let's say for example paracetamol so it produces nausea and vomiting right it is common side effect or common adverse effect a more prominent or more serious effect of taking paracetamol for long time is liver injury right which is not intended that why we are not taking this drug from this kind of injuries to our body right but still it is present it comes as a gift with the drug which is not intended and which is undesirable so that is adverse effect now this adverse effect is very broad term it includes all kind of nauseous effects 
let's say minor effects, serious effects and even fatal effects. So as per WHO, the definition of adverse drug reaction is any noxious change which is suspected to be due to a drug occurs at dose normally used in men and requires treatment or decrease in dose or indicates caution in the future use of drug. That is what exit definition of adverse drug reaction is. Moving on, pharmacovigilance. As per WHO, pharmacovigilance is a science and activities relating to detection, assessment, understanding and prevention of adverse effect or any other drug related problems. So what happens? A drug is uh, whenever a drug enters to market, okay, it is taken by thousands of people, right? Now, before entering the market, drug passes from the clinical phases. We call it clinical trials. And in clinical trials, drug is given to certain limited number of patients, let's say 1000 to 5000 patients in last phase of clinical trial. But it does not mean that if this 5000 uh, patient responded well with this drug, then drug will not have any other adverse or unintended effect in market. So, as the large number of population is not covered, the fourth phase of clinical trial, that is post-marketing surveillance or pharmacovigilance is done. In pharmacovigilance, what is done? So, each and every company is having its own pharmacovigilance department, which monitors vigilance, means to monitor the adverse effect of drug which is reported by a registered pharmacist, a doctor or a patient or a nurse or any healthcare professional. So that is pharmacovigilance. So in today's session, we talked about what is pharmacology, a brief history of pharmacology, pharmacodynamics, pharmacokinetics and adverse drug reaction. Thank you. Hope you like my video. Please comment. Your comments are valuable. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe our channel. Once again, thank you for watching.